Now that we have a bobbin as full as you want it to be, we're going to put it in the bobbin case. There's only one way it fits in the bobbin case, and that's with the silver down. So we're going to put the silver in. And if you look on the side here, there's a slot right on the side here. And we'll let the thread go around in its own circle, and it finds its way into the slot underneath the silver piece of metal. And this is the tricky part. We have the wire right here. You want the thread to go underneath the wire, and you might need to give it just a little bit of a tug without, oh, I heard it snap in place, and it's now going in between the wire. When we're putting this into the bobbin area, there's nothing to hold on to but the side of the bobbin case. You want this silver spot to go parallel with your machine. When you do that, all you need to do, push it in and hear that click. You also have a thread cutter right here on the side of the bobbin area. This area right down here is actually the low bobbin sensor. So if you use your machine a lot and don't clean it much, you might have some fuzz on here, which is going to make a difference in how the machine reads whether there's a low bobbin or not. We're just going to close the door. Wonderful jumbo bobbin. You're going to really love that. Let's go around to the main screen. The sides on this side, right here, these icons, tell the machine what's going on. This is actually your thread tension. These machines actually change the tension per stitch. So you really don't need to play with that much. If I go back and forth to a different stitch, you notice that that number changed. It knows where it wants to be. If you're using different kinds of threads and if you're doing different kinds of techniques, then yes, you probably want to change your top tension. To change that, all you, never do, all you need to do is push on it you see the screen changes, and this is where you would make it either up or down. Up tight, lower loosen. And it's always having to do with the upper tension. It has nothing to do with your bobbin tension. First thing you might have noticed is that this now turns yellow. Any time that you have made any changes from the factory setting on the machine, it's going to turn yellow. That's just to remind you that it's not at factory setting. That doesn't mean it's not doing what you're asking it to. It is. You can either touch the center of the area and it will take off of the yellow and go back to factory setting, or if you want to, you can scroll it until it gets to where it needs to be. Or touch the center. Oh, I didn't find the right one. So I like to touch the center of the icon. To close this out, you either hit the X mark or you touch the icon here again. This next one down is really important. This is a safety feature on your machine. You tell it what kind of a needle you have in the machine. If you have a regular straight needle, a double needle, what size double needle you have. There's things called triple needles, a wing needle, a hem stitch needle, there's another triple needle. You also see on here different kinds of throat plates. If you change your machine and you change your throat plate to the straight stitch throat plate, you really want to make sure that the machine knows that you're doing something differently. You'll see that the icon changes here. It's now yellow. I can um, make this go in and out either by the X or by touching the icon over here again. This is a safety feature that will stay on even when you turn your machine off and back on again. It wants to make sure that you know when you're actually changing your throat plate. So if I have this on a straight stitch throat plate and I go to a zigzag, look at your machine here. It's not allowing me to do a zigzag. It turns red. It doesn't want you to break a needle or have anything come at you. So. I have to make sure that I know that that's the straight stitch throat plate on there. I'm going to change it back to the 9mm throat plate. That's the same thing with your double needles. If you're using a 2.5 double needle, and you can see right here exactly what it's going to do. You can see on your screen, 
Will I make it wider? No, 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 no. It doesn't want you to do that. It's going to break the needles. So that's a really great safety feature. I'm going to turn that back into a straight stitch. Straight needle. This is presser foot pressure. That means how much pressure you, that presser foot is going down onto the fabric and whatever project you're doing. You can change that, make it lighter, make it heavier, depending on what your kind of fabric you're using or what kind of technique you're doing. This one down here that looks like the throat plate, that screen looks the same thing as the needle one does. And you'll see if you change either one of them, with the needle I've changed that, that's now yellow. If I change this to a straight stitch, this one is now turning yellow. But it can be found in either place. Right here, this is telling me the feed dogs are up. If I lower the feed dogs, it's now showing them yellow. Dropping the feed dogs on any machine other than the 880, you have to do manually. Down here on some of the machines, not all of them, if it reads the low bobbin sensor with the 790, you'll actually see a little thermometer. It'll get in a red zone, and then when it's really getting low, it'll really flash at you. Right here, it looks like a presser foot. These machines like to know what presser foot is on the machine. Some of them, with like the 790, you have to tell it which foot presser foot is on it. When I see this screen, it has all kinds of stars. That means with a particular stitch I'm on, it can use any of the feet that are highlighted. If you happen to know which foot you're using, you can tell it. Get out of there. And it's really not going to like it too much with this number two. So it went back to the 1C. Actually, I didn't say OK on it. That's why it didn't stay. But it will give you preferred feet. But with a 790, it really does want to know what foot you have on it. If you're telling it that you have the 1D foot on there, you better put your dual feed down, because it's not going to like it if you don't have it down. When I am going through the rest of the screen over here, right here is your needle up down option. Whenever it's done in this screen right here, and it shows the needle down right now, that means that it's going to stop with the needle in the down position all the time. It'll even remember that when you turn your machine off and back on again. This icon actually looks like this one as well. This is actually a manual override and can be used to make the machine go up and down with the half stitch. This makes it stop with the needle in the either up or the down position. Depending on what you're doing, you whichever way you like it. Over here, we have the different stitches that are in the different categories on your machine, or tabs. There's a little arrow right here. If you touch that, it's going to open the screen so that you can see probably most of the stitches that are in that particular folder. So you can see what you're looking at a little bit easier. To close that, I'm just going to touch that again. If you don't have it open, this one says it has one of three pages, and you can scroll through this way. The 5 series, you're actually going to touch your finger and pull it up. So these are actually the practical stitches, the practical stitch tab. Your machine, every time you turn it on, will automatically come to a straight stitch. This little squiggle get you into your decorative stitch folders. These look like regular folders, which means that there are more stitches behind it. There are different categories. You can open them up again and see what's in that particular category. And to close it, I can touch that again, or go right here. Alphabets, buttonholes, these are actually favorite quilting designs, or favorite quilting stitches. And you can scroll through and see what they are. This is actually favorites for memory. We'll talk about that later. And that's putting the, um, 
putting things into memory or what the last stitches were that were stitched out, I'm sorry. So we're going to go back to the straight stitch. The icon right here is information. This is one of your favorite ones. When you touch this, you're going to see a whole different screen and these are different functions that are available for that particular stitch. If it's not something that the machine wants you to do with that stitch, it's not going to give you the option. It will not show up on this information area. Up top here, you're going to see a lot in your manual or your machine mastery book talking about breadcrumbs. This is what we mean when we're talking about breadcrumbs, these little areas right here. The more you touch, the more you're going to have the breadcrumbs come across the side. The quick cheating way to get back to a different breadcrumb is to just touch whichever one you want to go back to. Sort of like a computer when you're going from one area to the next and you have that long chain of the all the different tabs that are available. Right now I have the information field closed out, but you see that it is yellow. That means that there is something going on there. Some function has been changed within that particular stitch. To find out what it was, I'll just open that again. So you will find when you go back in here, if I go to another one, You'll see the screen change. When you change the stitch, it shows you exactly what it is that you're doing and what you're going to be stitching out. And you might find different icons on here now under the information screen. When we look on the side over here, this is how you can set up your machine. It's going to look a little different depending on whether you're in the 5 series or in the 7 series or the 4 series. The home button right here will take me to the a embroidery part of the machine. To find those on the 5 Series machine, you're going to have three different icons right here, and that will get you to a different area of the machine, both your sewing and your embroidery area. These icons right here on the 5 Series, you're actually going to find externally right here on the 7 series. So we're going to talk about the straight machine part of it right now. These machines are wonderful in the fact that you can customize them any way you want. Think about the way you sew. If you've sewn for a long time, if you've had a Bernina before, if you haven't had a Bernina before, if you have favorite tricks that you are familiar with in your older machines or whatever you'd like to do, or you want to learn a new trick. There are lots of different ways that we can customize this machine. One of the favorite icons on your machine should be this one right here, the question mark. You can question, you have to ask the question first, about any stitch or function that's on the machine and you'll find an informational or a manual, whatever you want to call it, right there built in in the machine. Which is really kind of fun if you wonder when you get under the information screen, what are these icons for? Ask the machine and it'll tell you. You don't have to go and find your manual and figure out what page it's on. The gears we'll get into in just a minute, but you also have a book right here. The book is another way to get information without looking at your manual. If you have questions about threading the machine, Let's ask it. What do you want to do? Wind the bobbin. It's going to show you or tell you exactly what you need to know. The creative consultant or this little dress form, it's called a creative consultant. When you touch that, you have icons that are meaning different types of fabrics that you're working with. Sometimes I wonder what the icons are really supposed to mean. So. I hit the question mark and say, what is that one supposed to be for? It's a medium weight knit. So if I were working with a medium weight knit, I'm going to touch it. What do I want to do with this medium weight knit? Okay, some of these icons might be a little bit confusing also. So I'm going to hit the question mark 
and touch that one and say, okay, do I want to do decorative stitches on it? When I do that and I press the decorative stitches, we now have a new screen here. This is suggesting which pre um, stitch to use. This is suggesting which needle to use. And anytime there's a little drop down box in the side, you'll get more information behind it. We now have more breadcrumbs. I'm going to go back one breadcrumb, suggesting what kind of thread to use. Polyester. That doesn't mean you have to do what it suggests, but it's giving you an option there. It's suggesting to you which presser foot to use. I touch that. It's telling you what the 1C foot is and what it's for. Back a breadcrumb, and I'm going to hit the check mark. Anytime I hit a check mark, it says, yes, I really want to do that, and I want to take the, have the machine take me where it wants to go. It has now taken me to a decorative stitch. It has preset everything for me here. Suggest which presser foot to use. It's changed the presser foot pressure for that particular stitch, and it's changed the top tension. So when you let the machine do its own thing, you'd be amazed what it can happen without even thinking about it. So that's what the creative consultant is for. The ego button When you have to take the dog out, go fix dinner, unfortunately, or something like that, and you know you're going to be coming back to your sewing room later, you might want to put the eco button on. That powers down the machine, turns the light off. If you have any little children or animals, it actually prevents the foot pedal from being used, so you don't have to worry about anything happening to your machine while you're gone. To turn it right back on, we're going to hit the eco button again, and it comes back exactly where you left off. Clear button. Clear button is one of my favorites. When I go to, say, the stitch number one, it actually remembered what I changed last time. If I hit the clear button, it automatically goes back to factory setting. That's true with just about everything. If you notice right here, we have the external knobs for your stitch width. You can see on the screen when it makes any changes. You can also see right here on the top that what size it has changed to. When I touch that area, it brings up another tab that you can actually use your stylus and move it to see what size it needs to be. You can use your plus and minus, or you can use your external button right here. If I change the stitch length, you see that it has changed it here. You'll also see this little icon right here turned yellow, which means that something is different than factory setting. If I want to see what it's going to be, you can open it up and change it. If I hit the external clear button at this point, it's going to change the whole thing back. I had started out with a straight stitch. I played with the stitch width. The only difference between a straight stitch and a zigzag is your stitch width. So that changed that. When I changed the stitch length, well, okay, say I really just wanted to change my stitch length. If I touch my stitch width right here and touch it there, it has only changed the stitch width and kept my stitch length the way I had changed it to. When you look right here, these are your needle positions. You're going to watch it move right here. You have 11 needle positions. You can see on the screen when things have changed, and it's moving the needle from side to side right here. Hit the clear button, and it goes right back to the center. Let's see, what else do I have here? Putting the presser foot on the machine. You have a cone, or a hollow right here, and you have a cone right here. All I need to do is put the foot right in there, and when I turn this on the side, you'll see a little lever right here on the side that I pushed to hold it into place. Really easy to change these feet. 
some of the 4 series you also have clip-on feet that um, you would push the red button on the back of it and it would fall down. Um, you would also have a full shank right here and if you were to purchase any other feet it would be a full shank foot. Because I have the dual feed foot on, I'm going to, sorry about that, lower the dual feed, engage the dual feed, and you can see that it comes down into the back of the foot. To disengage the dual feed, I'm going to push down and let it go back up again. I'm actually going to take that off for the moment. To clean the machine, or to do something different, or to change the throat plate, normally I would take the needle out, but I'm not going to right now. I put the feed dogs down. On the top right hand corner, there's what I call a little bullseye. I'm going to push down on that. It pushes up, and it takes the throat plate out. To put the throat plate back in, I'm going to just reverse the process. And don't forget to put the feed dogs back up. When we're working in the bobbin area, I'm going to take this out and show you how to clean it and oil the hook. So we take the bobbin out by pushing that little button on the side. You'll also find a button right here on the left side of the machine. I'm going to push that off to the side and you have an opening here. When you pull this out, the hook comes out. The hook comes out. Right here is the race. When you actually um, oil the machine, you're going to put one drop of oil right down here. And if you look at the hook, there are two little pads right here. You're going to put a drop in each one of those pads, and that's it. That's all you need to oil the machine. To put the hook back into the machine, you're going to notice that there are slots right here, and there is a, um, I'm going to call it a hill right there. The slot goes right there. There's also a magnet right here and that pulls when you have it in there properly it'll pull it right back into the machine. Right now I'm just making sure that the needle is in the all the way up position. When you hold this it'll actually spin. You don't need it to spin. You have an opening right here. This is going to go toward the top. When I go and put the bobbin case back in you put the bottom in first, and it actually pulled right in with the magnet right there. I know that's in because it's flush on the side there, and then nothing's going to fall out. To put the race back up, I'm going to take my, both my fingers here, push it. I love hearing that click. So that's what you do when you oil and clean your machine. Put my bobbin case back in. Heard that click and away I go. To actually set up the machine, um, oh, one thing I haven't spoken about is the freehand system. Love the freehand system. Once you get used to using it, you get lost when you don't have it. What this is going to do is raise the presser foot and lower the feed dogs at the same time. See, I have the dual feed engaged here. If I were to lower my presser foot right there, you see it comes right back up again. That's called hovering. And there are going to be ways that we can change that if you don't like the hover. I'll show you that once more time. So if you watch it go down, it's going to come right back up again just a little bit. That's giving you the opportunity to actually move your fabric around to exactly where you want to be when you start your stitching. As soon as you hit your foot pedal, that foot, presser foot, will go down and stay down. Now the difference between doing this and using your freehand system. 
If I shift this with my knee, it raises the price of foot, lowers the feed dogs, and it makes it go down and stay down. If I stop with the needle in the down position and use my knee to push this right here, if I'm going in corners or something like that, I can keep both hands on the fabric. So I don't have to go and find where this button is. I don't have to find where this is. All I need to use is my knee, raise the press of foot, and let it go back down again. So there's the difference between using your freehand system and your press of foot lifter here. Let's see, what else was I going to do? So, when we're looking back at the screen over here and your icons over here, we're going to actually dig deeper into your machine and we're going to use the gears. This is where you can set up your machine. When I was saying you can make it any way that you enjoy sewing, this is where you go and do it. Remembering that anything you do at this point is not permanent. You can always change it back to the factory setting. So we're going to start right here. It looks like the um, practical stitch functions. It has the corner on here, which means that there's more information behind it. If I look right here, this is actually the top tension. It's the icons that are on the black part of the machine in your practical stitch area. Because you can do this individually, stitch per stitch, I usually let the machine do itself or change it individual stitch by stitch. When you're going into the gears, you're actually changing how the machine is going to function at the beginning to end. It, it, it changes everything internally. So I'm going to go back one icon, needle down. So we're going to question this one. What does that particular one mean? Securing stitches at the pattern begin, which means if you have your pattern begin icon right here, and it's going to actually stitch a knot straight up and down before it starts the stitches. You can either leave that on or turn it off. Another fun thing that you have with the, I believe it's the 5 Series on up, is a special press a foot pedal. The foot pedal actually has a different icon on the bottom of it. This is a multifunctional foot pedal which means when I plug this in and obviously you can let it go and it will start sewing but the part of it that's different is right here where your heel is. You need to put your whole foot on the foot pedal and when you rock to your heel actually it doesn't want to do that in this particular screen Right now it's set up so that it would do the needle down, but I can make it do different things. If I want to, I can have it when I do the heel kick, I can have it not off, I can have it use the scissors, and I can have it raise the presser foot. Depends on how you want to sew. Anytime you see these knots right here, you can choose whether you want the knot to be the straight up and down one that makes a little straight up and down knot or if you want to have it tiny little stitches that are going back stitch. If you want it little stitches going back stitch you can tell it how many of those stitches that you want it to do. You can have in this screen you can have it do all three things tie off, cut, and raise the presser foot. If you only want to use it for raising and lowering your needle it will only do that, so you have to have it on this particular icon. Going back one breadcrumb. Speed control. You have multiple ways to control the speed of your machine. The one that most of us are used to are your foot pedal. But you can put a governor on that. When the buses go down the road, they're not supposed to go be higher than, what, 55 miles an hour? So if you have a little one working on your machine, you might want to put a governor on this machine so that they do not go flat out racing. When we're in 
the screen right here with the setup, this is actually going to change the speed of the the top speed of the machine, no matter how you're doing it, either with the foot pedal or with your slider. Right here, this is where we're getting into all of these functions right here. And you'll see that it shows you which function it's referring to depending on what you're doing. This is where it gets kind of a little confusing, but once you've sewn a little bit, you get to used to what you really like about the different functions and how they're used. So if I press this one, this one is this icon right here, your presser foot. How high do you want that presser foot to raise when it's hovering? I can make it go from two millimeters to raise it all the way up to, what's it go to, five? No, it goes even higher than that. So if you look right here, if I'm raising the presser foot, it's now going up considerably higher. So that's changing the hover height when you're raising the presser foot. Scissors. Everybody loves the scissors. They're great. But you can have it do multiple things when you are cutting this, um, using the cutter. Do you want it to tie off first before it cuts? You can turn that tie off function on or off. Quick reverse. I haven't spoken about the quick reverse button. That's this icon right here. You're going to hold it in for as long as you want to go backwards. You have two choices of quick reverse. You see one right here. If you're in just what I call the backwards fish hook, it's when you go backwards, it's only going to go straight backwards. If you're using this icon right here, it's actually going to follow that stitch backwards. If you're working with a decorative stitch and you're doing a flower, it's going to follow that flower backwards to tie it off. The next icon down refers to your needle up down that's in the blue part of your screen. When we go here, you can choose how much you want it to hover when you stop with the needle in the down position. Do you not want to have any hover on it at all? Do I want to have it come up just a little bit? Or do I want to have it come up a lot? That's totally up to you. The next one is the tie-off, which is, if we look at the screen right here, it's this button right here. We're going here. When we tie it off, do we want to do that straight up and down tie-off, or do you want to do those tiny little stitches that go straight? I think we've covered just about everything in this particular field, so let's go back one more breadcrumb. We've covered everything here. The next one down here, with the eyeballs, you can turn your sensors on or off. This top one is for your top thread. When your thread breaks or you run out of thread, if the sensor is on, the machine will stop. This one is for your bobbin or your low bobbin sensor. If you don't want that on, you would turn that off. When would you not want to have your top thread sensor on? If you are doing something like needle punch, you don't have any thread in your machine, so you have to turn that sensor off. Or the machine is going to say, no, I don't think I really want to work because I'm not being fed properly. The same with the bobbin. If you're working with something, um, something special, and for some reason or other you want to have the door open, you would have to turn that sensor off or you're not going to go anywhere. This is actually for the embroidery, and we're not going to go into that right now. The next one down is the sound. I don't know if you've noticed, but every time I hit either a stitch or function, the machine is making a little beeping noise. This is what um, noise you want it to make when it's touching a stitch. And when I go through here, I'm going to be quiet so you can hear the different sounds. or you can turn the sound off. That's the same when you hit any function. 
the I is for the functions, you can make it make different noises or turn it off. The stitch regulator, when you have that going, if you're going too fast, it's going to yell at you. It's going to beep at you because it means that you're going faster than it wants you to to make sure that those stitches stay a little bit more even. But if you're used to going faster, you can turn that off so you don't hear the noise. This icon right here, you're turning all of the noises off. Back one breadcrumb. This is where you're really going to personalize it. Right now the screen is blue. I can change what color the screen is. If I happen to like pink, you see that it's changed it to pink. If I like some kind of a wallpaper or a different picture, actually you can't see it very well with that. Let's see what happens with the blue. It's kind of hard to see, but that's actually changing the wallpaper. So you have dots, you have little waves, all different kinds of things. And right here with the welcome sign, when your machine first turns on and it boots, you actually see a welcome. You can change it so it can say anything you want. It can say, hi, good morning, it's time to get going, let's have some fun today, whatever you want it to say. And you'll see that when the machine boots up. Let's go down here. This is where we're getting into the nitty gritty of the machine. Over here, if you have any questions before you touch anything, ask the machine first. What is that one going to be? Language selection. Every time machines come in our back door, we actually sew on them when they first come in to make sure nothing has happened when they have been shipped. The first thing the screen comes up with is what language do you want it to be? We always choose English, assuming that you want English, but if you speak another language or from your, another part of the world, you get to have it in whatever language you want it to be in. This is factory settings. I don't usually play with that too much because everything that we've done so far, we can reverse. It's nothing that is permanent in the machine. Light bulb. Don't you just love these extra bulbs? It is wonderful. I don't know about you, but I like having the extra light on my machine. But you can choose how bright you want it to be. This icon is how bright the screen itself is. If you'll watch, you'll see the screen get a little bit darker. Make it go back. This is how bright you want this underside lighting to be. If you want it to be a little bit darker, you can make the light less bright. Back a breadcrumb again. This is the tool section where what we didn't do was clean the scissor area. If I touch that, or actually this is the calibration of the machine. If for some reason or other your buttonhole needs to be calibrated, this is where the technician will send you. But usually you don't need to do anything with that. If the machine needs to be updated, you can do that yourself using a USB stick. This will walk you through how to do that. This is going to suggest to you how to oil your machine. And this is for cleaning. This is how you would clean your thread cutter. And I didn't set the machine up for that right now, I apologize, but the throat plate would be off, your presser foot would be off, your needle is out. It's going to tell you, when you read down through here, to touch this link. When I touch this link and then touch the scissors, the scissor mechanism will actually move to the side, give you the opportunity to clean it. When I scroll down farther here, to move it back into place, I'm going to touch this icon and touch the scissor button, and it will go back into place again. So that's for cleaning. Back another breadcrumb. Over here, if for some reason or other your screen, your touch screen, is not working properly, if I touch over here and it's doing something over here, that means that the touch screen needs to be recalibrated. This is where you would do it. You'd touch right here. It will come up with an X or a um, cross 
you want to use your stylus, not your finger, and touch directly into the center of that cross. That'll move to another side. Oops. It'll move to another side. You touch that one again. It'll move to a third position. You touch that again. That's recalibrated the screen. So when you're touching things, it's actually touching in the proper position. Information. We're down to the information area. When I go here, what is it? Let's ask it before I play with it. What is the firmware or the hardware? Um, where are you within the machine? What? Sometimes those get changed depending on whether you're upgrading your machine or not updating your machine. Right here, you have a phone. This can be used for either emergencies or if for some reason or other you want your personal information in the machine. Do you want to put your email in here? Do you want to put your phone number in here? Um, do you want to put your address in here? You can do that, your name, address, and phone number. If for some reason or other you don't want your information in there, because you purchased your machine at Bernina World of Sewing, we have, um, we know what serial number your machine is. So if you happen to put our information in here, if you need to find out what happened with your machine, you can dig through and we'll find out whose machine it is. So it's up to you whether you want to personalize that or put the store's name in there. Log. Let's find out what that one means. Service data. Currently I don't believe our technician is using this. This is probably for future use where I believe you would put a USB stick into the machine and then send it to the technician. ID. Question what the ID is. This is where it will tell you what your machine ID is. I don't know why you would necessarily need to know that, but you can find it if you want to. Upgrade would be right here, and it will walk you through all those things. So I think we've covered just about everything in that area. And actually we've covered just about everything in this whole settings icon. Remember when most of the things that you do in here, you're changing the machine, but you're not permanently changing the machine. So if you want to go back and change things, you can certainly do that. So we've been through the home icon, the settings, the information. Um, let's get out of that. This will get you to your built-in guidebook, your creative consultant, your question, your eco, and your clear. So I'm going to go back to stitch number one. Looks like there's nothing's been changed on this at the moment. Just for fun, I'm going to change my stitch. I'm going to go to stitch number two. I'm going to change that one a little bit. Whoops. So I've changed things. You know that because these are yellow instead of white. This machine has temporary altered memory, which means that when I go back to that first stitch, it remembers how I changed that. When I go to my second stitch, it remembers how I changed that. This will all clear out when you turn your machine off and back on again. If I want to just clear this one, I can hit the clear button. That goes back to factory settings, but it remembered that I had changed that first stitch, that my straight stitch is not a straight stitch anymore. I'll just hit the clear button. So it has temporary altered memory. So when you're going back and forth in a project, with one stitch to the other, you don't have to keep changing your settings every time you go back and forth. The stitch right there is when you're turning memory on. I'm not going to play with that right now. This actually takes the foot off of the screen so you can see what the stitch looks like in big size. So you see everything that changes here. Oh, 
I'll hit the clear button and it goes back to factory setting. We've covered a lot of information right now with how to totally set up your machine. Remember, your USB stick has your machine mastery book in it. Everything that I have told you is also in your machine mastery book. And it will show you with the 435 what I talked about will work with your machine, the 475 and on up. So don't forget to use both the video and your USB stick. Next one we're going to start sewing. Enjoy your machine.